Now in this screencast, we're going to look at a third example, example 10.3, and in this example, we're going to use MATLAB's function fsolve to solve a system of six nonlinear equations. Now we're looking at the um, balances around a condenser, and if you recall, just to put this into context, in the condenser was placed here, which is after the reactor, and both C and D, which were the, our two products of our reaction, are partially condensable, and so we're going to are, are condensable, so we're going to partially condense them into a liquid stream, which is drawn off as a product, and the vapor stream is going to be sent back to recycle. Now the condenser is operating at, amb at ambient one atm, and we're going to assume that Routes law holds and the Antoine equation is accurate for um, the two species C and D. So our goal here is to write the six equations that are needed to solve this problem, and then we're going to use MATLAB and FSolve to find the, the temperature needed to achieve a mole fraction of C in the product stream, that is XC, of 95%. And so here are our knowns, or sorry, our unknowns. We don't know the um, composition of the vapor stream. We don't know the molar flow rates N.V or N.L, and we don't know temperature. Now, our molar flow rates out of the reactor and into the condenser are shown here. Now these are not the same values as what we solved for in the previous example, but that's okay. We're just going to use these numbers for this example. And here are the Antoine constants for um, C and D. Okay, so to solve this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our four material balances and the two Routes law relations. Since we're going to use F-solve and we want to have the equations to be of a form where you want to have zero on one side, then we're going to write our four material balances as in minus out equals zero. So the material balance for A would be um, zero equals what's coming in and not A2, and then minus what's going out, which is YA, which I've put into this form, times N dot V. Now we have a similar material balance for B. We have zero equals N dot B2 minus YB n dot v, and another similar one for c, 0 equals n dot c2 minus yc n dot v, except for c also is in the liquid stream, so minus xc times n dot l. And finally, the material balance for d. For d, you have 0 equals n dot d2 coming in, minus this is what's leaving in the vapor stream, and also this is what is leaving in the liquid stream. And we also have our two Routes law relationships that we have to worry about. And so those written um, so that zero is on one side would be zero equals, this is the Routes law relationship for C, YC times system pressure minus XC times the vapor pressure of C as a function of T, which we're going to use Antoine's equation for. And then for D, you have this similar equation here. <clears throat> And so now what we're going to do is we have these six nonlinear equations, and they're particularly nonlinear because you have Antoine's equation in them as a function of temperature. <clears throat> and we're going to use MATLAB's F-solve to find these six unknowns. We have our three um, component compositions for the vapor stream. We have our two molar flow rates for the vapor and liquid streams, and then temperature. So the first thing we need to do is write a MATLAB function M file that accepts as input some vector Y, which is our vector of our six unknowns and spits out the vector f of y. And so this function will begin to look something like this. So this function has one output, which is f of y. And it also has one input, a vector of our unknowns. Now the next thing that we're going to have in our function is that we want to unpack our unknowns vector y. So we want to define each individual uh, variable as each individual element of y. So remember, if we look back at our vector of unknowns, yb was the first element of the vector. So we're going to say yb equals y of capital Y of 1, and et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. And by, by doing that, we're going to unpack our vector of unknowns into our six different unknowns. That way we can write our equations more transparently. We're going to define our other constants in the function. We're going to write our two Routes law equations. Sorry, our two Antoine, Antoine equations. And then we're going to put input our actual equations that we're going to solve for, the six equations we're using. So this should have said Antoine equations right here. And then we're going to finally pack back up our function vector f. So to show you what that looks like, we're going to go over to the script over here. I'm sorry, go over to the to the MATLAB function. So this is 
the line of code that I already showed you in the lecture notes. We have comments here so that you can go back and look at what's going on. We have unpacked our unknowns vector y. So remember yb was the first element of our unknowns vector. yc was the second, etc. yd, n.v, n.l, and then t was the final component of our unknowns vector. And the reason why we have to do this is that fsolve is expecting a single input to this function. And this single input is going to be a vector which contains all of our unknowns. And the reason why we unpack it, and we don't actually have to unpack it, but what it's going to do, as I said before, is it's going to make writing our equations a lot more transparent so we can figure out what's going on. And in your case, you can figure out what the greater, the greater can figure out what you were trying to do. Okay, so once we unpack our, our unknowns, we're going to define our other constants. So remember, yA is 1 minus the other vapor mole fractions. xC was specified to be 0.95. That's a problem constraint. xD is 1 minus xC. We have a system pressure of 1 atm. And then we have all of our component inlet flow rates. These are the knowns for the problem. Now, oops, so I didn't, like I said, this is not supposed to be Routes law. So let's change that. Oop, OK. So here are our Antoine constants for uh, C is there and D is there. I've defined what our vapor pressure is for those two things. So this is now a function of temperature. And remember, temperature was entered into our function as part of our unknowns vector y. So there it is. We have a value for t here. And so what MATLAB is going to do is it's going to evaluate the vapor pressure of C and the vapor pressure of D at that temperature, which is given to this function by fsolve. Now, fsolve knows what this value of T is because he starts at his, at his initial guess, and every iteration that fsolve runs, it's going to have a different temperature that it's going to try. So every time fsolve calls in this function, it has a value of T that it's thinking might be the right one. And so for at that particular temperature, you have your vapor pressure C, your, va your vapor pressure of D. And then finally, we're going to input our equations. So the equations look like this. So I'm going to call this variable FA. I'm going to call that the left-hand side of the ma material balance on A. FB will be the left-hand side of the material balance on B, et cetera, et cetera, for FC and FD. Now, the left-hand side is trying to be 0. Don't forget that part. Okay. And then finally, um, we have our two functions of our Routes law for C and our Routes law for D. So these things are also trying to be zero as well. Now once we have our six left-hand sides, our F's on the left-hand side, we want to put them back into a um, column vector called capital F because this is going to be the output of our, F of our function that fsolve is going to be looking at. So don't forget what fsolve is expecting in addition to a single input, which is our vector of unknowns, it's expecting a single output, which is a vector of the left-hand sides of the equation. So we're going to pack up our left-hand sides of each individual equation into this column vector, which we call capital F. And so this is the function that we are going to use, and this is the format that F0 is going to expect it in. Now, in addition to the function that we just wrote, we also need to write a script that will call on fsolve. And in this script, we are going to um, define what our initial guess is. We're going to tell fsolve what function we want it to look at. Now, remember this function right here, this part is the actual file name that we saved the, the file as on our computer without the .m extension, and uh, which is preceded by this little at sign, which tells it that it's going to be looking for a function. <clears throat> and then we're going to run fsolve. So fsolve is going to be looking at this function, which we gave it right here, and using this y0 vector as an initial guess. And then once we, have, once we have y, we're going to display what our outputs are. So to see what that script looks like, we're going to go back to the MATLAB editor and look at our script. So here, what our, here's what our initial guesses are. So I'm going to start out to do initial guesses by looking at the component inlet flow rates. Now, we didn't have to put that in here. Because if you recall, the component inlet flow rates were part of the actual function. Here they are. And so nothing about this script is going to be able to change that. But I need to have that in here because I want to write this line here, which is the total inlet molar flow rate. And I want to do that because that will help me get a good guess for what our n.v and n.l are going to be. So those are be, that will relate to our initial guesses for those. Now, our initial guesses for the three um, component mole fractions in the vapor stream will assume that we have an echomolar vapor stream. 
our n dot v initial guess will be half of our total inlet flow rate, and n dot l will be half of our total inlet flow rate as well. So our guess will be an equal split between vapor and liquid. And our initial guess for temperature, I'm just going to pick 55 degrees C. And so this is what we're going to do to pack up our initial guess vector like this, our six initial guesses. Now note, these initial guesses are in the same order as the vector of unknowns, which I was talking to you about before. Now we're going to call on F solve. We have our function handle here. Call on F solve. And when we run it, we should be able to, MATLAB should be able to find what those six values are. And then we're going to display our answers. So let's go ahead and run this. So when we run it, F solve spits out all of this um, information about it. But that's okay. It's just some information about the uh, way that F solve solved the problem. And then the, our display shows what our three different component uh, mole fractions are for the vapor phase, vapor stream, tells us what our vapor um, molar flow rate is and what our liquid molar flow rate is. And finally, it tells us what our temperature is, which is what we really want to find in the end. So to wrap up with a lecture notes, when we ran the code, we found that our temperature T was equal to 81 point, oops, that looks really ugly, 81.6 degrees C. Oh, something I forgot to tell you was that F-solve does have the same kind of expectation as F0 did. So F-solve expects handle, the function handle, to be the first argument and your initial guess as the second argument.